All right, I'm back. And we're just going to keep going, uh, implementing these opcodes, and we'll see how it goes. I'll clean this up a little bit because I don't need this stack anymore. Uh, by creating this stack, I kind of violated the uh, system a bit because I really should limit this to size of, I think it was 24, but we'll just go for any valid chip 8 program will work as intended. So it should be good. All right, it turns out I don't need that break at the end. That's cool. I guess that's because a throw is guaranteed to, to jump out of this kind of like a return statement. Does that make sense? All right, let's try this. We're going to jump to address NN. So case OX1000. And this jumps, uh, it doesn't actually call a subroutine. So because it's jumping, I do not think I need to actually push the instruction onto the stack or the current program count or whatever we want to call it. So we can just go for it. Uh, I think we're going to say i is equal to, and then this will be the uh, lower uh, 8 plus 4, the lower 12 bits. So this will be off code ended with, I totally got this, don't worry about it, 0 FFF, -F -F. perfect. Now that I've engaged brain, and uh, we have to cast this back to u short because unfortunately everything here uh, turns into an integer. So I think we can cross that one off. Next, off code, we're going to be calling a subroutine. And because we're calling a subroutine, I expect that we're going to be pushing onto the stack this time. So what I will do is I will do stack.push the current instruction pointer. And then I will say that i is equal to this big thing again. Okay. I. I'm a tiny bit worried here because I think that perhaps I should increment the instruction pointer up here first after starting to execute the opcode, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So let's carry on. Uh, we've got here three X and N where the X is the four bit register identifier and then the N is the eight bit constant. Cool. Let's try that out. Okay. So I want an easy way to assign registers, and so I'm going to do that now. Uh, what's the best way to do that? Actually, no, th this will be fine. I think what I'm just going to do is I'm going to rename this registers D to make it a little bit easier. So skips the next instruction if VX equals NN. Cool. So if vx, which is just going to be the uh, that part of the opcode right there, so it's going to be opcode handed with ox 0 f 0 0 and then we're going to have to shift that down by eight bits because we want to get that portion of it down into the LSPs, and so we're taking it. And that, that looks pretty good. If that is equal to the opcode end with OX00FF, then we're going to skip the next instruction. And so to skip the next instruction, we just have to say I plus equals two. Okay, what's it complaining about here? It says and cannot be applied. Right. We just need to worry about our order of operations. Okay. I think that will do the trick. So if they are equal, skip the next instruction. Case OX4000, almost exactly the same, but this time it does not equal. Next, 5XY0, skips the next, next instruction if VX equals DY. Okay, cool. So if V and then that chunk of stuff there is equal to the almost the same chunk of stuff, but we need to take that portion of it, which means we're only shifting by four bits that time. Skip the next instruction. Cool. On to the next thing, case 600. Let's see here. Sets VX to NN. Okay, so we're going to take that chunk and assign it to that portion in it, which are the lower 
which is the lower byte, and so that would be the byte of opcode ended with OX00FF. Now as an aside, you don't actually have to type those leading zeros, this would work just fine. I'm just doing it because we're working with 16-bit values here, I like to display the full 16 bits. So that looks okay. One thing worth mentioning as well is that I've, I've probably violated the spec a little bit here because I'm not ensuring that that lower 4 bits is equal to 0. So hopefully I don't run into problems with that later. Carry on. Uh, 7 adds NN to BX. Very, very similar. similar. So we'll take this and instead of assigning it, we'll just say it's plus equal to. Cool. Now we're getting into 8, which looks like all the math operations. And then 9 goes back to conditional. B starts to pull from memory. B is flow control. Okay. Cool. So we'll implement a little bit of an ALU here. This will be fun. So what we're going to want to do here is probably switch now on the lower four bits. It looks like that's the value that keeps changing. And so I will use a switch statement here, and I'll take the opcode and end it with OX000F to just get those lower four bits. And if the case is zero, we're doing an assignment. So it sets VX to the value of VY. And I, I'm not going to do anything like looking at this, I'm like can I cache the value of VX, VY or pre-compute those or do something with it so that I don't have to do a bunch of this opcode stuff in there. Uh, maybe what I can do is just something like this, VX is equal to uh, this portion of the opcode. So this is the address of VX, it's not actually the contents of VX, but it's what I will use to look up the correct value in this array V. And then VY is equal to almost the same thing. But the next four bit chunk. And then what we'll do is we will assign those. And so VVX is equal to VVY. I think that's all we need to do. And then case one is going to be VX is equal to VX or with VY. So VVX is equal to VVX or with V. Case two. All right. We need to convert that back to byte because all of these operations, these uh, bitwise operations create integers all the time. This is going to be casted to byte vvx ended with vvy. Okay, case 3 is an exclusive or. Let's do that next. Case 3 is an exclusive or. Next, we've got case 4 where we add that thing. And I think we have to be a little bit careful here because it looks like VF is set to one when there's a carry and to zero when there isn't. So what we can do is we can say V15 is equal to VVX plus VVY is uh, greater than 255. We'll set it to one, otherwise we're gonna set it to zero and we have to convert this back to a byte. and then we will do that addition. So BVX is equal to, convert to byte, BVX plus BVY, and then I'm going to end that with OX00FF so that I only get the lower eight bits. Finish that off. Let's see, five is going to be subtraction. I think I can do something similar here. VY is subtracted from VX, VF is set to zero when there's a borrow, one when there isn't. When there's a borrow, I, ex 
I need to look into more documentation of this because I don't know what 4 means. I expect that it means that it was below zero. So if it's zero, then it meant that there was enough for it to be above zero and one when there isn't. So one would be when it's below zero, but I'm not sure of that. So I'm gonna look up a little bit more documentation. We'll be right back.